given that South Dakota is consistently in the lowest 20% out of the nation in terms of uh, education funding per pupil, uh, how we could justify spending less than we already are. Uh, another, another point to that is that uh, teachers in South Dakota are about the lowest paid out of any uh, state in the nation. Um, in terms of academic performance, we, uh, from, from most of the statistics that I've seen, we're probably about average, just about in the middle. Um, and to me, that's not good enough. So again, cutting funds and taking programs and services away from education in South Dakota is not a good thing. And we do really poorly in some things like uh, uh, prep, preparatory uh, programs for college education. I think South Dakota has 32% or 35% of schools, of high schools in South Dakota, have some type of college preparatory um, you know, uh, classes in place, so AP classes to earn college credit and things like that. The nation's average is 65% of high schools in, in all the other states across the nation, so uh, we're lagging quite a bit behind on that metric for sure. And I saw something else from 2009 saying that 91% of teachers in South Dakota schools felt that um, their, that, uh, their daily activities or duties and paperwork type of things were interfering with teaching. And I've definitely seen that with my own children, just in terms of them being, you know, the teachers being overloaded, tons of kids in the classrooms, uh, for one thing. And even when that's not a case, I mean, my oldest child who's hearing impaired, he needed some speech therapy. And we were kind of new to the IEP process, the individual edu individualized education plan. And so, we went ahead and took what they gave us, but what they gave us was 20 minutes of speech therapy twice a week. And as it turned out, half the time, we only got one of those 20 minute sessions every week with the speech therapist. And after finding out some more about what he should actually be receiving in terms of speech therapy, again, he's hard of hearing, so uh, speech is a big thing for him to work on. You know, we really. Uh, found out by looking at the evidence and, and what uh, children like my son really need. He needs a lot more than that. But and when we went to fight for that, to, for him to get more services there, um, you know, come to find out that the speech therapist that he had, she just extremely overworked. There's tons and tons of other kids that she is responsible for. And so that was part of the, you know, the 20-minute thing was just the fact that we don't have enough uh, resources available. We need more teachers. We need more qualified teachers to be able to, to do these types of things. So at this time, I mean, um, you know, I, I completely understand the governor's uh, wish to have a balanced budget and to make sure that our structural deficit is taken care of. And I completely agree with that. Whether it's with the state or with the household, you need to make sure that you're able to uh, make more than you spend so that you, you're not running into debt. Uh, so I completely agree with that. And I'm actually on board with, you know, rather than doing like I've heard uh, comments about a three-year plan to, to get to get to good. And I actually like the fact, you know, the, the approach of let's, let's, you know, fix this structural deficit in short order. But what I don't like is the fact that they're going after some of these uh, programs like education, and healthcare, medical care for our children. Um, you know, if you're in a family and you know someone, and, and times are tough, and you go to look at the family budget, you know you don't start cutting out things like college education funding right off. You don't stop taking your children in to get checkups and things like that because you know those are some of the higher priority things that you do. What you do is you take a look at the things that are lower priority, that are more discretionary type spending, and you start cutting those. And you go out and try to find more sources of income. So maybe you go and get a part-time job, or you know maybe you start a business on the side or something like that. I've actually done that. I've actually started a business on the side of my day job 
uh, partially because you know we wanted to create more income so that we could do more as a family um, and reach more of our goals. So as a state, that's what I'd like to see as well. There's other areas where we can cut uh, funding. We've got subsidies going out to these huge corporate farms and we tend to have with the subsidies with the farming the way that it gets sold in the political uh, advertisements and everything and the way that we think about it normally is we get this nostalgic idea of the family farm my grandparents were farmers so um, I know what a what a real family farm looks like and uh, looking at the recipients of the subsidies and I've written about this and and you can see exactly how many millions of dollars some of these large corporate entities have gotten these are large corporations these are not little small family businesses but we're subsidizing them and we're giving billions of dollars over the years I think over the last uh, 15 years or so it was you know somewhere around nine billion dollars that we've given in subsidies to these large corporate farms now sure uh, some of the smaller you know farms they will get some small portion of those subsidies but the 61 percent of all the subsidies given so all of that nine billion dollars went to the top 10 percent of uh, of farms and I can guarantee you that those subsidies went almost exclusively almost all of them went to these large corporate entities so that's you know just that's just something to keep in mind I mean one of the ones that I saw for 2009 one of the biggest recipients was Dakota Bank Dakota Bank getting farm subsidies for land that they own um, so these are the types of things that we can you know what's more important giving subsidies to these large corporations or educating our children I don't think that's a hard decision to make but it seems to be something that uh, a lot of people are struggling with including the governor um, another source of revenue could be the lottery system so we have a South Dakota lottery and about a little less than I think it's a little over maybe 20 percent of that goes into education funding and almost the rest of it close to 80 percent goes into property tax reduction so these this is a subsidy on property taxes in order to you know that we're using that funding for um, in terms, again, in terms of priorities, do we want landowners and homeowners to reduce their monthly payment by $20 every month, or do we want our children to get a good education so that, you know, 20, 30 years from now, this state will be a better place than it is today? I would say that if we're going to bite the bullet, we should stop trying to balance the budget, which is a long term, you know, it's a good, you know, financial approach to to uh, running your budget but we need to address that not with short-term thinking of we want to save money now on our property taxes and shortchange our children and their education now so that you know later on they're not going to have the benefit of that we need to be thinking long term and how we balance this budget as well and in my opinion that includes not cutting education and not cutting Medicaid not cutting these programs that do so, such important work for our kids, especially our kids with special needs, uh, the birth to three program, um, quite a few other programs that you know my family's gotten benefit from, and a lot of other families have gotten benefit from, especially the early intervention programs. If we can get uh, the services to these kids early, then we can save ourselves a lot of money down the line. Again, this is long-term thinking. We need to bite the bullet in terms of doing preventative stuff now education we need to you know build that framework and then later on we'll be better off so uh, I especially was in terms of uh, the governor and his um, his statements around the budget he you know the, the thing that he came out with was that he vows to not raise taxes um, and that's always been a little bit perplexing to me because if you vow, if you come into the conversation saying that you vow to do this, that means that that's your top priority. So above anything else, above the education of our children, above the medical care of our children, 
um, above anything else, he vows to not raise taxes. So I think he's got his priorities mixed up. Um, you know, we don't like to raise taxes or, you know, I don't like to pay taxes, but taxes are necessary because there's a lot of things that are public goods and you run into the tragedy of the commons if you try to leave it to individuals to be able to pay for it themselves. Um, and so there's a lot of efficiencies too when you get together as a group. I mean, that's why we have public education because that's really, for the most part, that's the best way to do it and the best way to approach it. But then when you do that, you have to have leaders who have the vision to be able to get beyond the whole, you know, uh, people not wanting to do that because they don't want their their mortgage payments to go up by 20 bucks a month. Um, you need to be able to, to think beyond that and really think about what we're doing as a state. Uh, not today, not tomorrow, but all of that time, you know, 20, 30 years from now, everything. And what are we doing now that's going to impact those things? I mean, it's it's strange because there's a mixture of short-term and long-term thinking in the same sentence even coming out of uh, the governor's mouth. And uh, it's really vexing to me because it seems really focused on getting the budget fixed now. So let's do it this year. Let's get it fixed. Let's not wait three years. You know, let's think about this long-term. We don't want to keep... keep uh, kicking that can down the road and take care of it later and take care of it later and take care of it later. And I completely agree with that. Let's take care of it now. But let's also do it in such a way so that we're not sacrificing the, the long-term futures of our children in order for some short-term gains.